One thing that always happens to me on Black Friday is that there's always one piece of software that I didn't even know existed that is priced down for Black Friday. And uh, this year was not an exception. Um, this year, this piece of software was GameSynth from a Japanese company called Tsugi. And as it turns out, this is a really nice piece of software that uh, not a lot of people are talking about. And there's actually not a lot of videos about it either. It's it's almost as if nobody knows about it. And so I felt it makes sense to make a little video about it. Now this is not going to be an in-depth review because I didn't have enough time to really kind of dig deep into this particular piece of software. So it's more of a first look review and uh, to give you some idea of what it can do and what it is good for and uh, all the capabilities that it has. Because I do believe this is actually really interesting that might actually help you in your workflow, especially if you're working with game audio. And with that being said, let's get started. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design, and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. Invite link is in the description below. And since you're already at it, also please don't forget to press the like button. It really helps out the channel and makes my videos more visible to other people. Thank you. As always, I need to point out that I'm not taking any sponsorships for my channel. So this is not a sponsored video. I actually purchased that software myself because I felt it's actually a really neat piece of software that could be useful at some point. I did purchase it during the Black Friday sale, which made it a little less expensive. Uh, but essentially everything that I'm going to say today is really strictly my own opinion. So nobody paid me to say anything and uh, nobody is going to see this video before it comes out. And with that being said, let's have a look at GameSynth. Now I'm going to post a link to the webpage in the description below. GameSynth is essentially advertised as a solution that integrates with traditional uh, audio middleware solutions for game development. So it can be integrated into a VICE workflow or an FMOD workflow. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to create all kinds of sound effects in, at scale, so it's it's sort of something almost like a tool that you can use in order to kind of push out lots of different sound effects with lots of different variations at a very short amount of time. Now, unfortunately, the synth itself is fairly expensive, so it comes in at 400 bucks. Uh, at the time I'm recording this, I'm still on Black Friday mode, so this is still at uh, 195. It was 50% off. So by the time you're watching that, that's probably no longer the case. However, um, if you are only interested in a certain portion of that game synth, they also sell individual modules that you can purchase so for example if you're only interested in the weather module you can just kind of purchase that and work with that alone now what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply open up game synth and then just go through the individual modules that come with game synth and uh, just give you some impression and some idea what it can do uh, how it works and what it is capable of so let's open up game synth now when you open it up it comes up with an empty page. And the idea is that the first thing that you need to do is you need to choose the module that you're working with. So there are a couple of modules here. We have a whoosh module, an impact module, a modular module, a retro module, a particle module, a voice FX module, a footsteps module, a weather module. And the idea is that you can also purchase add-on modules. I think at the moment they're offering one additional module, which is a, an engine module. Um, but essentially the idea is that before you do anything, the first thing that you need to do is you need to decide what you're actually working on. So for example, if you're working on bushes, you would open up that module and then the module will come up with all kinds of uh, things that you can change with an interface that sort of allows you to really fine tune your individual sounds. And the basic idea is that you draw your sound effects and uh, I probably should take my headphones and put my headphones on. Uh, but uh, the idea is that you essentially draw here and that gives a whoosh and uh, you can do multiple whooshes here and if you want to play them essentially you have the play button and they would also play it at the same time and that allows you to create all kinds of effects. Now you have uh, different parameters that you can uh, work with and change. And depending on what module you're using, these parameters actually change quite a bit. So for example, if you go to the impact module, uh, it looks completely different because the different parameters that you're working with. Uh, and here you can essentially create impacts. Um, if you go to the modular module, there is sort of almost like a modular synth that you can use. So let's just open up an, a present here. 
So that uh, essentially looks a lot like a traditional modular uh, visual kind of uh, uh, interface that allows you to kind of use individual nodes to create a synth uh, that way. You have a retro module that allows you to um, essentially kind of create uh, retro sounds. And, uh, and in the very same way we used in the Woosh module, this is done by essentially drawing. And uh, this allows you to kind of do all kinds of things and you can create all kinds of different effects. There is a number of presets here. Uh, we have a particles module and for the particles model, let's just open up a, a present here. Also allows you to uh, essentially change all kinds of parameters. So this is a fairly deep piece of software. There's a lot of stuff that you can do and a lot of things that you can change. Let's just kind of go through the modules quickly. So we have the voice effects module. Uh, let's just open one present here. Yeah. You will be assimilated. So this allows you to take in a, a particular piece of voice and then uh, apply all kinds of effects to it. And once again, we have a sketchpad that allows you to kind of change the individual parameters with the sketchpad. We have a footsteps module, with some, which is something that is probably very um, often used by uh, game developers because game developers usually need a lot of footsteps. So let's just kind of do that. Uh, and let's just open up maybe a kind of the sleepwalking example. So. So you hear the footsteps. Now I do have to say that while uh, the complexity of the software is really interesting, the quality of the sounds is not always uh, ideal. So, so kind of especially with the footsteps, I do believe that there are better solutions out there where you can get more realistic footsteps. The one thing that can, that this can do though is it has a lot of possibilities to customize whatever you're doing. So this is, and this is probably going to be one of my main um, out, uh, outcomes of my review really is that the fact that um, this is not a piece of software that is meant to get your results quickly. If you if you want to use that, you, there's actually a learning curve. So you need to be able to really understand what these individual parameters are doing in order to really be able to kind of create sounds that are uh, realistic and that actually fit into your game. So it's not something that you that you simply kind of can take and then kind of just push out a couple of sounds in a very brief amount of time. You actually need to learn how to use that software. So in, in that sense, that uh, software is actually very, very similar to many traditional game middleware solutions so it's really function over form. So um, a lot of functionality, but uh, uh, quite a bit of a learning curve. So, so just be aware of that. Now the final module that we have here is the weather module and that weather module essentially allows you to do all kinds of things. So for example, we have a, a kind of a situation where there's a wind going. And what we can do is in the, in the um, we can, for example, add a rain. So, for example, at the very beginning, we have we have a, a rain um, cloud or whatever. So, if if uh, the idea is that this path is is uh, run through, and as uh, the path essentially kind of passes through the rain, you will actually hear a rain sound. So, let me just kind of play that how that sounds. So, we have the wind coming, and then at some point, the rain will come will start. There's the wind coming in, and then it continues on. Now, um, the game synth has a couple of things where you can actually customize things. So for uh, one of the things that you can do, for example, is you can add automation curves. And the way this works is that in, for each of the parameters where you can add an automation curve, it has these little buttons here. There's an A button and an M button. And the A button essentially means that uh, that's a, that allows you to add an automation curve. The M button is essentially one um, that allows you to uh, add these meta parameters. So let's maybe add a, an automation curve that uh, adds a little bit of a whistle to our wind sound um, and the way to do that is we simply go into the automation curve section and let's just add an automation curve here and I, I'm not going to give it a different name let's just leave it like that and uh, let's let's just kind of let that go from maybe one down to zero and we also need to change the duration otherwise we are not going to hear much because it's going to go down to zero pretty much immediately so let's say let like 20 seconds what that will essentially do is it will uh, start out with a whistling sound and then we'll reduce that sound uh, the only thing that we obviously need to do is we need to drop that automation curve onto the whistle sound here so let's do that and let's see how that or let's hear how that sounds so here we have the whistle
and it's essentially kind of fading away as time passes. And that way you can create all kinds of effects um, and that makes it actually really, really powerful. The second thing that we can do is we can add so-called meta-parameters and these meta-parameters essentially allow us to control multiple parameters simultaneously. So let's just uh, add a meta-parameter here and uh, I don't really need to give it a name. And what I'm going to do is I'm maybe going to uh, control the amplitude and maybe, I don't know, maybe the maybe the speed and then uh, and let's just go into the edit page and the amplitude let's just open it up here completely and let's say we want to kind of have that go down a little and in the same way let's go through the speed and have the speed also go down but just not as much something like that and uh, this essentially then allows us to control this one parameter or kind of these two parameters with one parameter only so let's just kind of see how that how that works let's just start the the, the wind again and i can then essentially control the speed and the, and the amplitude of the wind with this parameter here So all in all, very powerful, a lot of options, a lot of things that you can control. Um, but what really makes this interesting is the way it actually integrates with uh, something like Audio Kinetic Vice or F-Mode or even just um, kind of a, a Reaper project, really. And in order to see how that works, let's go to the Woosh module, um, because that, I think, kind of shows best what is going on here. So let's go to the Fire Pass by, uh, and I'm going to drop that here. So that's that sort of the that sort of the uh, the pass by. Now the one thing that I need to mention is that there's also a possibility to add some variations. So there are a couple of parameters here that are variation parameters. That essentially means whenever I'm I'm pl pl playing the sound, it actually kind of changes that parameter randomly. There are also other parameters that have these yellow bars, and that essentially means there's also a range that these parameters have. So I'm, if I'm going, if I'm uh, left right click left clicking left clicking and go and going up and down I can actually change the randomization here and uh, whenever I play that whoosh sound it will always sound slightly different there's a main uh, variation slider here that is, tells me how much variation I want to have let's put it up to 100% so whenever I, I push the play button it will play the sound slightly differently And that can actually be very powerful because in game design, the pro one problem that we could often have is that we don't want to have the same sound repeat constantly. So what we usually want to do is we want to have a variation of sounds that are similar but not exactly the same. So, so we want to have a little bit of variation in there and then sort of randomly choose a sound that, uh, that essentially kind of fits that category so that we have a little bit of um, kind of uh, change in the way the sound works or kind of a little bit of variation in there to, to kind of keep it entertaining and engaging. Right, and you can do that uh, with this tool automatically. So you can create a whole uh, random um, a list of sounds uh, simultaneously, and then integrate them into your game project. And the way this is done is by uh, either going through the render function or the export function. So let's just look at the render function for once. Uh, and the idea is that uh, what you can do is in variations you can say, I want, uh, let's say, I want to have ten different. Oops, that's a little much. Uh, Hundred. <laughs> I want to have 10 different sounds um, and uh, and then essentially I can uh, essentially tell it that uh, to create 10 sounds and it will actually create 10 different whooshes that are all following the same uh, setup that I have here, the same parameters, but they are just kind of slightly different from one to the other. Uh, and I can push the render button and I push, can push that out. But what's even more interesting is the fact that you can directly export into audio middlewares. And for that, we can use the export function. So one thing that you can do, for example, I can choose to output that directly into audio kinetic wise. And for that purpose, what I would need to do is I would need to choose a project. So there needs to be an existing audio kinetic project. I actually have a test project here somewhere. So let's just open it up. And here is the audio kinetic test project. So let's open it up. And and as soon as I have that, I can a uh, couple of things. So first of all, I can tell it how many sounds I want. So let's say I want to have 10 sounds. 
and then I can tell it what type of container I want. So these are all parameters that are important for the audio middleware that you're using. Now in audio kinetic wise, you're working with containers and uh, these containers can be one of many things and uh, we can actually choose that here. So for example, we can choose that to put that into a random container. So what's going to happen there is that the, um, the, the sounds will be exported in a way that uh, can be directly read by audio kinetic wise. It will kind of be put into a work unit that is called GameSynth uh, into a container that's called Bush, and that container is a random container and it outputs into the master audio pass and then I simply say okay and it's going to be rendered out and as soon as I have that rendered out I can simply open that up in audio kinetic wise and I have the random container already ready to use for my game and that's actually fairly fairly powerful uh, I, th I think that's actually one of the more nice the nicest thing about the software that it is capable of really having this this uh, randomization built in and you can actually create these sound effects at scale, right? So, so that, that uh, for example, you need like 10 different footstep sounds for uh, kind of somebody walking on, on, uh, on snow because you want to have a little bit of variation in there. You can simply do that. You, you tell it, you set up the parameters, you tell it, create 10 different random sounds and put them into a random container in audio kinetic device and it will actually do that for you. So this is very, very powerful. Um, now, overall, what are my opinions? Well, first of all, I, I think it's a fairly expensive piece of software, so that's one thing. Um, but but uh, for the right people, this is actually really useful. Um, now, the user interface, once again, could uh, use a little bit uh, TLC, but that has to do with the fact that uh, you know, kind of, this is meant for professionals, and in a professional environment, it's not uncommon to have a, a user interface that is uh, really focusing on function over form. Um, for those of you who have worked with audio kinetic wise, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Audio kinetic wise is a very complex user interface that is not at all user friendly, so you need some time to get used to it. This is the same thing here. Here, even though it looks like it is very simple to use and it's very user friendly, but there is a lot of functionality packed into that user interface, and the functionality also differs from module to module. So there's not a consistent user interface across all the different modules. So it takes a learning curve. So as I said before, this is not something that you can use uh, for a quick kind of uh, fix on getting a couple of sounds out there. This is something that needs uh, some learning, uh, that needs to be familiarized with you need to familiarize yourself so that you can actually create a set of realistic sounds. Um, there's a lot of functionality in there. But once you get the, the handle and once you, once you actually figure out how to use it, I think it can be really, really useful for creating large sets of sounds and sound effects at scale. So for any company that is really kind of interested in, uh, in kind of creating games on a larger scale, this is certainly a tool that I would recommend. Now, this is really everything I wanted to say today. Uh, thanks again for watching my videos. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join the Discord community. The link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.